dropping by the channel. My name's Leah, and we're going to talk about uh, Real Housewives of Miami. This is episode 10, and y'all, they over here arguing about Kanye West's eggplants. <laughs> it's been too much of that going on. Too much of that going on. So let's okay, get it, y'all. So the episode opens up, and it's Larsa and Alexia, and... Um, Larsa's at Alexia's mail bar. I said mail bar. Her nail bar. And they're getting mani patties. And then they're just talking about the trip, how exhausted everyone is from what happened in the Hamptons. The topic of Nicole comes up. And Larsa was like, she don't even really have a problem with Nicole. And she said, even though I said the illegitimate son or the wedlock comment, I was just coming back at her because she came at me. And then um, Alexia's whole thing is like, she don't know what was up with Lisa and her attitude, but she need to fix it. But Alexia also feels like, how can Larsa really judge someone when your life isn't that great? So then they flash across the screen a headline. And the headline reads, because y'all know I got my screenshot. It says, Larsa uh, Pippen snuggles up to Malik Beasley in Minnesota, um, in Minnesota as she proves her romance with the married NBA player is still going. So it's like, can you really judge somebody? And honestly, y'all, I'm not even that mad at Larsa. I'm really not. I mean, was the comment kind of wrong? Yeah, but it's like, you was calling me a hooker so I can talk about how you had a baby out of wedlock. That's your fault. <laughs> like, if we're going tit for tat, like, I don't get why y'all be acting like when you're arguing with someone, you need to be nice. If we're arguing, I'm not going to be nice. I'm not. <laughs> it Well, it depends on what we're arguing about. I can be respectful depending on what we're arguing about. So then we see Lenny and Lisa. Y'all, it was like the Lenny and Lisa show. Like, they gave us too much of Lenny and Lisa. And we just gonna talk about them and get them out the way. So, um, Lisa pops up in the Lenny's office. She's calling, well, she's meeting up with him because, first of all, she knows me. Like, his phone was sitting on, the t on his desk and she wanna go through it. And I'm like, sis, if you don't trust him now then don't be with him like that's the one part i don't understand when people find out that they're significant under a uh, significant others cheat if you guys choose to stay together and work it out then you also need to rebuild your trust in that person but if you still feel like you can't trust them then i wouldn't stick with you like i really wouldn't like i'd just be like you know what it ain't worth it um but she's over there because her nanny quit and my thing is like lisa this sound like a you problem because if a whole agency keeps sending you nannies and they keep quitting, you the problem. Like, you the problem. <laughs> but I was just like, Lisa, don't nobody really care. You ain't really got nothing going on. Don't nobody care. So then we see um, later on in the episode, we see them having like a family dinner with her, um, with Lenny's parents and uh, with the kids and with her and Lenny. And it was nice. You know, I like I told y'all, I binge watched the first and second season and I slightly went through the third season but you there was a lot of animosity and tension between Lenny's mom and Lisa's mom mainly because they were like Lisa was young like Lisa said they were young and they thought I was a gold digger and they also didn't like the fact that she couldn't produce children or hadn't given Lenny kids when it's like that's all you're, you're here and that's all you're good for and she said their relationship didn't get better until she had kids and I was like, that makes sense. Her mom is from a very old generation. And also her mom is Eastern European. So they probably have way different cultural um, constructs and like rules in their culture. So I was just kind of like, well, I mean, I got where the mom was coming from. But I also feel like, girl, this my vagina. This my body. I'll pop out these babies when I feel like it. And if I don't, I don't. That would have been me. But. I'm not married and I'm clearly not married to Lenny so it doesn't matter so and so now we're gonna hop back into like what was going on so then we have a um sit down where we have Kiki Gertie Nicole and Julia meeting at Nicole's house y'all there's something about Nicole that I just it feels disingenuous. I know a lot of people have been going up for Nicole, but there is really something about Nicole that feels disingenuous. And I had this feeling about the bird lady on Potomac and my and it became true. So I'm gonna be cute with Nicole for right now until she do something. But 
I didn't like how she was retelling this story. How she said when she confronted Alexia, she was really nice. But when they did the flashback, you called, you told her she was a being a bitch. Like, and you were yelling at her. How in, in that way is that nice? And I mean, I know that might be Latin culture to yell at each other, but if we not friends, don't yell at me and don't like raise your voice at me, even though like if you're trying to talk to me or have a one on one with me, like because I'm honestly, I'm going to reciprocate the same energy. If you yelling, Leah going to yell. <laughs> so I was just kind of like, no. And then they bring up the like illegitimate, um, the out of wet like comment and the illegitimate comment. And this is my thing. Like, Julia being mad, okay, Julia, didn't nobody tell you to have three kids with three different men? The first child, bless that little baby soul. Like, bless that little baby soul, and I'm sorry that that happened to you, because that, that was horrible when she told that story. But the other two, like, m like I said on Twitter, you can't be ashamed of something if you're not ashamed of it. Like, your contempt with Larsa is because you're ashamed of it. You're ashamed you had three different kids by three different men. Like, and that's you. Like, that's your fault. Didn't nobody tell you to be out here having kids with three different people. Like, it is what it is, ma'am. It is what it is. So I was like, Julia, miss me with this. This is just fake anger because I really feel like Julia ain't got nothing this season other than her and her awkward and weird relationship with Adriana. And then for Nicole to say it's beautiful, it's not beautiful. It's borderline disrespectful. Mind you, Kiki and Gertie looked really pretty in this scene. They just always look good. You know, the Haitian women always look good. But it, they're, Adriana and, and Julia, Juliana, whatever, their relationship is disrespectful. Because if it was a male and a female... I would be like, no, ma'am, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. And even if it was two men doing it, I would be like, no, ma'am, because it's like, what is married? Like, that's my thing. They It's borderline being disrespectful. Now, I understood when Julia was like, Adriana is a wonderful friend. She like, you can call her anytime. And we have, and I, and I think that about their relationship is, is nice. <laughs> Having other people in your life besides your spouse that you can call and have deep conversations with and know that they're going to have your back that's wonderful but the way y'all parade and showcase your relationship is disrespectful and like and like Rodney said if Martina come around that corner with a racket and beat y'all down <laughs> you deserve it you just you deserve it so now to this conversation about Kanye West's penis <laughs> y'all it was stupid it was so stupid so it opens and we're at this really nice i guess like um beach side or or ocean side um restaurant and it's kiki adriana and larsa and you know kiki kiki is i'm as beautiful as kiki is i'm tired of her talking about she wants some penis like, she wants some Zozo. Like, it's kind of like, girl, like, like, you're beautiful. You can get it if you really want it. So stop talking about it. Maybe you're trying to get quality and that's harder to find. Well, it's not. It, it really is. It really is hard to find. But, sis, like, stop it. Stop it. Like, it's annoying that she keeps mentioning it. But they're sitting down and basically Larsa is like, and I... I they're sitting down there talking about it. And Larsa was like, you know, I don't want to be with a man that's not going to do things for me. So it seemed like Scotty did a whole lot for her. But in him doing all of that things for Larsa, he seems to be controlling. And that and that's the thing where I'm like, Larsa hasn't learned from that relationship, in my opinion. It's like, you're trying to assert your independence. You're trying to gain your own... Um, your own bag, your own wealth or whatever, your own income. But yet and still you want this man to do everything for you. And it's like there are men out there that will do everything for you and and still be like a decent human being. But the vast majority of men and women or, you know, people in general who they feel like, man, if I do all of this stuff, for you if I'm taking care of the bills, I pay the mortgage, I pay this house. 
I foot everything. There's a level of control that anybody would have or want to have over the person that they're doing it for. Because at the end of the day, you're basically being treated like a child. Like, and that's kind of what Lisa's in. Because it's like, Lenny don't be paying Lisa no mind. And it's because Lenny knows that anytime he can go, Lisa can't. Same way with Larsa. Anytime Scotty wanted to go, he could because he controlled everything. And it's like Larsa still wants to be in that type of relationship. And I'm just kind of like, stop it. And then the weird thing is like when they ask Larsa, well, look, what kind of men do you like? She always keeps saying tall, dark, and handsome. Girl, just say black. Just say black. I would give you more respect if you would just say black. Because the little Malik, the Malik man, he black. Scotty black. And then you was messing around with Future and he black. Tr and you said you was messing with Tristan and Tristan is black. That's all your date is black. She was trying to nice it up. Tall, dark, and handsome. Black. Blackity black, black. <laughs> so, Adriana gets there. Because this was a conversation between Kiki. Because Kiki had asked about, like, helping her, like, meet men and stuff like that. And they get on the discussion. I don't even know how they got on the discussion about, like, Kanye West. I really don't even know. But they get on the discussion about Kanye. And Larsa, it gets visibly uncomfortable. And it was messy. But I was here for it. Like, the questions that Adriana was asking are the questions that I want answers to. If you're going to be on these shows and this show in general, girl, answer these questions. So Adriana basically was like, what happened between you and Kim? What happened between you and Kanye? They flash over the screen another article and it says Larsa Pippen breaks um, silence on falling out with Kim Kardashian, blames Kanye West and Travis Scott. And we know Travis Scott is with Kylie. <sighs> like Adriana says, she was like, we know what happened with Larsa is Larsa moved to LA with Scotty and her kids. She hooked up with Kim. And then once she hooked up with Kim, she started to morph into like a Kim. She became Kim's best friend. And then she morphed into like a copycat of Kim, but like a downgraded version, like a discount version of her. Cause she still looked like Larsa, but you could tell that like Kim probably hooked her up with the same plastic surgeon. So she could get the big booty, the, you know, the dipped in waist and all that stuff. And all of a sudden they stopped being friends. And we get like a little bit of tea, but Larsa was like, she loves both Kim and Kanye. Me and Kim were good friends, but I knew too much. Like I was always, I was in the middle and I knew too much. And then it just became too much, which I could believe like anytime you get between your friends and their significant others, it gets messy. But I think there is more to it. I think either Larsa did something because she got too uncomfortable when they were talking about Kanye West's like ping. So like Adriana was telling a story where she said she was at this art gala and like she went into the restroom and she accidentally opened the stall and Kanye West was peeing. And so she saw it and Larsa's like, I call BS. That's not true. And then Adriana's like, yes, it is. It's my life. And so they get the arguing back and forth. And then Larsa's like, if you want to take it to 2,000, like, I can get it. Like, she was like, I can take it to 100. Adriana was like, well, sis, I can take it to 1,000 or 2,000, whatever you want to do. Basically saying, like, I will match the, the same energy you give me. And then Adriana calls Larsa a bitch. She was just like, you're always such a bitch. And then Kiki gets frustrated. And she was like, stop arguing. But Kiki was, I think Kiki had a point because Kiki was just like, this seems deeper than what it needs to be. Mind you, I was kind of with, I was with both of them. I feel like Larsa made the situation more, more than what it needed to be because it was like, okay, I get it. You don't want to talk about the story because you know the person, but you could have laughed it off, rolled your eyes and kept the conversation, like moved to something else. But the way in which Larsa did it was very dismissive. And then to tell Adriana, she didn't believe her story. So now you're making it seem like Adriana is lying. So Adriana feels like she has to defend herself. I feel like Kim, not Kim, I feel like Larsa fed into the situation. 
And then for Larsa to like get loud and not think Adriana was going to get loud. That was stupid to me. <laughs> that was stupid. But Larsa ends up leaving. <laughs> and Kiki and Adriana are sitting at the table. And Kiki like, you okay? And she was like, no, because I wanted to eat. But she was like, no, nah, I don't want to eat no more. And I was like, y'all did the most. So the final scene is Gertie's event and it looked nice like it looked really good like Gertie looked like a little <laughs> a cute little black Barbie doll with those like from the 80s with those puffy shoulders and that blue that blue is so pretty on people like it looked good on Dr. Jen on Real Housewives of OC and it looks amazing on Gertie and so her dad is there her husband's with her it was nice to see them like embrace and she's just happy that he's there um what they're gonna do is auction off dresses they have this really cool like photo booth the food look great and then they're gonna have a fashion show with um a Haitian designer and you can like I guess take a picture of the outfit or like they giving out QR code so it directly like sends you to the link where you can purchase the outfits you see on the runway and then all those proceeds will go to the kids. The goal is to get to $25,000 and hopefully they get there. The other, the fashions that were showcased were actually really nice. So I was like impressed and I think Gertie did a good job. I think this show really have, I hope it has given Gertie, um, what's the word, more business. Because honestly, we've seen Gertie really push her skills. We saw it in the beginning when she was um, showcasing when she was doing that spread for that layout for that magazine. With this event, her working with Alexia, we might not have seen Alexia's um, actual wedding, but we saw how organized she is, and I that says a lot about like that is a good advertisement in of it of in and of itself in the sense of like okay you're gonna be dealing with somebody who knows what they're doing who comes organized and who comes like who comes with it like you're gonna have the best event because she's gonna require a lot of information from you so I'm happy for her I'm hoping that they make their um goal which was the $25,000 so we see Marisol and Nicole. So the first people that are there is Nicole, Julie, Julie, I'm about to call her Juliana, y'all, Julia. And then all of a sudden, and I think Adriana was there too. And then all of a sudden, um, Marisol walks up. I don't know, y'all. I feel like both of them are pressed. Marisol is definitely pressed, but I feel like Nicole is pressed because Nicole has been saying how like Marisol is like dead to her. She tried to work it out with her, but it's whatever. She walked away from me, blah, blah, blah. And she, but she was just like, but I can be cool, like, you know, being in a room with her. But the moment she gets to the table, you walk away. So then in Marisol's mind, that means Marisol's like, oh, sis, you're wounded because I got in, I got in your ass. And that's where we're at. And I was just kind of like, no, she might not want to engage with you. But this whole, like, I'm above it attitude that Nicole is giving, it's not giving what, what, it's, what it's supposed to give, in my opinion. So everybody's there. Alexia comes with um, Todd. So, but like, yeah, everyone's there. You got Alexia, Julia, um, Nicole, who else? Kiki even shows up. Kiki's there. Like, all the ladies are there except Larsa. But everyone gets to watch. Um, everyone's taking their pictures in the booth. Everyone's eating. They're all impressed with Gertie's skills. And when they're um, doing the actual fashion show, everyone's there to see the fashion shows. And a lot of people were actually interested in the actual garments going down the runway. So I hope she does reach her goal. So then you got Adriana being a messy Bessie, walking around, telling everybody, did you hear about what happened between me and Larsa? And so she tells Marisol, and Marisol's like, what were y'all arguing about? And she was like, um, about Kanye's you know what? And Marisol is like, for real? And then she talks to Alexia, and Alexia's the same way. She was like, why were y'all arguing about that? Like, everyone thinks it's stupid. She even tells, um, what's her name? Gertie, which I'm like, when did Adriana and Gertie become friends? Like, did they make up and we just didn't get to see it? Like, it's weird. Because uh, like, because when they had that fight, it seems like they didn't want to be near one another. But like they're hugging on each other and things of that nature. So it's kind of off. So then Larsa shows up. She's one hour late. So it's kind of like you already lost points in the battle because this event was for charity. Yes, Adriana is being messy, but you showed up an hour late and then got into an argument. 
And like, like Alexia says, y'all are arguing about a man's penis that neither one of you have. And we're at an event for underprivileged children. This is not the time nor the place. <laughs> so Alexia, so they're all standing there. So then Adriana is like, so I'm not about to rehash the whole argument. But basically Adriana has always felt like since season one that Larsa has looked down upon her. She mentions that when Larsa and her first met, she mentioned how she was married to this NBA player and kind of stuck her nose up about Adriana. And I think Adriana feels like, how dare you come back to Miami with your tail between your legs trying to uh, usurp this group like you the HBIC because you got kicked out of L.A. or run out of, ran out of L.A. because you are no longer friends with the Kardashians. And that's basically what it is. So then I didn't like how Larsa was like, she's crazy. And I'm like, no, she kind of has valid points. Is she putting 20 on 10 right now? Yes. But like you constantly telling her that she's not being rational and I'm a rational person. It's like, no, Larsa, like you got mad defensive to the point where it felt like maybe you and Kanye had some dealings or you're scared of the Kardashians and you're afraid that like you gonna get sued or something or somebody's gonna come at you but it was like it was giving very much like I like it, it was giving very much that because it was like the argument it didn't need to be this like it didn't need to be this kind of argument because the story was stupid so Adriana gets frustrated and she just walks away and walks onto the balcony and she tells Larsa like you think you're better than us and Larsa says that's in your head and it's kind of like it is but it ain't like Larsa you do carry yourself like you're up here especially when it comes to Adriana like you made digs about her feet you said slick stuff about her since the first episode you talked about how hard her titties are even though they are hard you talked about her feet you talked about like like you 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 make digs at the girl so it's like it's not all in her head like, because you do make those digs, but then it's partly is in her head because no one can make you feel bad about yourself, Adriana, if you don't, if you feel like you're less than. Like, if you don't feel like you're less than, then whatever Larsa says to you would be like waters off a duck's back. Like, it wouldn't bother you as bad as it, it is, as bad as it is right now. But yeah, y'all, that's it. That's all. Next episode look hot because Julia and Larsa about to get into it. <laughs> I think it's going to be stupid, but I'm here for it. But remember to be bravely authentic. Drop down in them comments below and let me know your thoughts. And I'm out, y'all. Deuces.